This is a fourth video in this series working with the Make Human model in Blender. And in the last video we left off with the need to do our best to set up a hairstyle with the particle system hair that we created in that video. In between videos I've done a few things on my own. One of the things I've done is organize my scene. I now have the main body in the first layer, hair, teeth, tongue, eyes in the last four layers, and the camera in the separate, in a separate layer as well. And I now have selected all of the layers with body parts in it. I've also scaled my model to around 10 blender units tall, and set its feet just slightly above the x-axis. Now I want to snap my model to a grid line. Zooming in on the model, we can see that the OB data is very close to a blender unit line, and I'm going to center it onto a blender unit line. First from a front view, I'll look and place my cursor roughly on that grid. Then I'll look at a side view and bring the cursor over so that it lines up with the z-axis. And then snap my cursor to the grid. Then snap my model to the cursor. I will center the data on to two of the three axes and it's sitting on 0x and 0y and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the z-axis. So it's centered on two axes and off on one. And the feet are still slightly above the x-axis line as a result. I'm going to work with just the main body of the model now and start on the rigging. After selecting the layer I want to work with, I'm also going to select the layer underneath it. And that way, as I'm building the rigging, it will actually be built in that layer. I'm going to place my cursor for a balance. And I need to sort of guess at a center of balance for my model. So I'm going to guess somewhere in between the belly button and the around the waist area here. Zoom in a bit, snap my cursor to the grid, look at it from a side view, and add a bone. So this will be my first armature. Tab into edit mode, select that bone, use the period key to take, change my pivot to 3D cursor and rotate that bone around the 3D cursor pivot by minus 90 degrees and then scale it in until it's sitting inside of the body. This bone I'll call balance. And I'm going to set my cursor for a spine. Again, just estimating where a spine should start. Add a bone to that location, turn on my 3D manipulator, and use the comma key to change my pivot back to median point. Pull the tip of the spine bone till it's around level with the shoulders. Orient the bone so that it's more centered on the neck area. And then extrude it for a neck bone, which will also center in the area of the head. Now pull that bone to around the base of the skull. And then extrude again for a head bone. This bone I'll extrude along the z-axis. Then I'll select the spine bone and subdivide multi with a number of cuts equal to 3. This will give me 4 bones for the spine. So now I have the balance bone, spine 1, spine 2, spine 3, spine 4, neck, head. And I'm going to avoid physically naming the bones in the editing buttons to save time. Now I'll build a collarbone. I'll look at that from a side view. Typically a collarbone starts more forward in the model, so that's where I'm going to start it on my model. From a front view I'll add a bone, grab it, and orient it in the area up between the armpit and the shoulder. 
Generally, I'll set it a little bit high. From a side view, I like to enter center into solid mode to center that bone on the arm, the tip of the bone onto the arm. And in solid mode, I can simply see a little bit better where the center of the shoulder is. Now I need to extrude a bone for the arm. For this, I like to enter stick mode. So I'm going to extrude that and pull it straight down to the wrist. The reason I pull this bone straight down to the wrist is because, and enter the stick mode is because I want to be able to see when the bone is centered on the elbow. I also need this bone, well, the upper arm left bone and the lower arm left bone to be in a straight line from a front view to help facilitate the eye case function. From a side view, I'll need to pull the tip of that bone into the wrist and center it somewhat on the wrist area. I'll again check from a front view that it's reasonably centered in the area of the elbow which it is, so now I'll subdivide that. Now I have collar bone left, upper arm left, lower arm left. Using the arrows from the 3D manipulator, I can see how well that is centered onto the area of the elbow, being a location of a pivot point. I'm going to want to locate that and perhaps scale the, up, the lower arm down a bit or up a bit, whichever is required to get that set into the elbow area. And again, I'll select a pivot and use the 3D manipulator to see if it's on the elbow. I'm going to scale that bone down a little bit further, and that should do. At this point, I'll change my view back and go into a wireframe. Pull that elbow till it's inside and centered in the arm. This will give me a bone sequence of upper and lower arm left, which is in a straight line and facilitate the IK. With that much of the model built, I'm going to cut out of my video and see how much time I have left in this particular video and be back in just a moment. I still have a couple minutes left, so I'm going to quickly add the last bones. I'll snap my cursor to the pivot in between the collarbone and the upper arm bone and add a bone there. Pull the tip down until it rests inside of the mesh. This bone I'll call anchor, IK anchor left. Snap my cursor to the elbow. Look at it from the side view, add a bone there. Select that bone. Use the period key to change my pivot to 3D cursor, rotate that bone by 90 degrees, and scale it down a bit. This bone I'll call arm plane left, and then snap my cursor to the wrist, look at it from a front view, add a bone, select the bone, rotate it around the 3D cursor, so my pivot's still in 3D cursor, by 90 degrees, and scale that bone down a little. That will be our MyK left. In the next video, we'll carry on and start adding the bones for the leg. And until then, happy modeling.